Tell What's so peaceful you. about you? Tell Do you know your history? Yeah. That's right, sir. Do you know the history about the crusade? Go ahead. Right. That's right. That's right. Don't you ever insult my intelligence like I don't know That's the right. history of the Catholic Church. Amen. I research you devils. Amen. That's why I'm able to fight you devils. That's right. Amen. The crusade and the millions of bloodshed Amen. that the Catholic Church spilled yes. Amen. on the grounds of Europe. That's right. Yeah. Gino Jennings, a prominent an often controversial pastor, has long been a vocal advocate for reform within various religious institutions, including the Catholic Church. His recent calls for transparency, accountability, and a return to biblical principles have struck a chord with many believers who are increasingly frustrated with the current state of affairs within the Church. Jennings' message, grounded in a stringent interpretation of the Bible, argues that many of the Catholic Church's issues, such as the pervasive sexual abuse scandals and financial mismanagement, are the result of straying from biblical teachings. He believes that true reform can only be achieved through a strict adherence to the moral and ethical standards set forth in the Bible, and this message has resonated deeply with those who seek integrity and substantial change within the church. Catholic Church, years ago, they was the governmental body of Europe. That's Amen. right. They decided who lived and who died. Amen. Amen. Who you think endorsed the witch hunt? That's right. That's right. That's right. Catholic believers. Oh, yeah. That's right. Murdering innocent women, Amen. men, innocent babies, Amen. and men. Yeah. You say you don't believe in violence? Uh -huh. Well, you got some Catholic men that were slave owners. That's true. You got some Catholic slave masters that raped women. That's right. Know your history Amen. before you write Pastor Jennings. Amen. Jennings' critique of the Catholic Church is rooted in his broader theological perspective, which emphasizes the absolute authority of the Bible over any human institution or tradition. He argues that the Church's hierarchical structure and its emphasis on the authority of the Pope and the clergy have contributed to a culture of secrecy and impunity, where immoral actions can be covered up and those in power are not held accountable. Jennings advocates for a radical restructuring of the church's governance, where transparency and accountability are paramount. He insists that all religious leaders, including the Pope, must be held to the highest standards of moral conduct, and those who have engaged in or covered up wrongdoing should face appropriate consequences. One of the core aspects of Jennings' message is the call for a return to biblical principles. He emphasizes that the teachings of Christ and the apostles should be the ultimate guide for all aspects of the church's life, from its doctrinal teachings to its ethical standards and organizational structure. Jennings points to numerous instances in the Bible where leaders are held accountable for their actions and are expected to live lives of integrity and humility. He argues that the Catholic Church's departure from these principles has led to a range of problems, including the well-documented sexual abuse scandals that have rocked the church in recent decades. I'm going to throw them in jail. That's right. Amen. Throw in jail. The law is made for the lawless. That's right. I'm going to throw them in jail. That's right. You let any minister follow me approach any boy, young child follow me. That's right. A, a grown man. Amen. Going to approach a little boy. That's right. Amen. First church of our Lord Jesus Christ. The security team will lock you up. Lock right. you up. We'll cuff you. That's, That's right. right. Hold you to the police car. That's right. Throw you in jail. Right. And press charges. That's right. The sexual abuse scandals, in particular, have been a focal point of Jennings' critique. He argues that the church's handling of these cases has been deeply flawed, characterized by a lack of transparency and a tendency to prioritize the institution's reputation over the well belling of the victims. Jennings calls for a thorough and independent investigation of all allegations of abuse, with full cooperation from the church hierarchy. He insists that those found guilty of abuse or of covering up abuse should be removed from their positions and face legal consequences. Furthermore, Jennings advocates for comprehensive support and compensation for the victims, emphasizing that the church has a moral responsibility to address the harm that has been done. In addition to the issue of sexual abuse, Jennings also highlights financial mismanagement as a significant problem within the Catholic Church. He points to various instances of corruption and misuse of funds, arguing that these are symptoms of a deeper spiritual malaise. 
Jennings calls for greater financial transparency with regular audits and public reporting of the church's finances. He believes that the faithful have a right to know how their donations are being used and that greater transparency will help to restore trust and ensure that the church's resources are used in a manner that aligns with its mission and values. Jennings' message is not only a critique but also a call to action for believers. He encourages members of the Catholic Church to speak out against corruption and demand higher standards from their leaders. He believes that active engagement from the laity is crucial for fostering a culture of accountability and transparency. Jennings argues that believers should not passively accept the status quo, but should instead take an active role in advocating for reform. This includes participating in church governance, holding leaders accountable, and ensuring that the church remains true to its biblical foundations. Why are you asking me? We've been calling for the priests. Yeah. Long time. To come. Long time. We've been calling for a captive priest for years. Amen. Amen. Long time. I mean, what I got to do? Make a booty call to get him to come here? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> My Lord. Am I right, boys? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the only thing that get them moving. Go that's ahead. Right. That's right, sir. <laughs> Go ahead, man. <laughs> Go ahead. We, <laughs> we've been calling for the priest. Go ahead. It's not the only thing get them fellas moving when there's some meat around. Amen. <laughs> we've been calling for the priest for years. Oh, yeah. But not one got the gump. No, so no. I'll tell you what. Why don't you come? Right. right. Why don't you come? That's we'll right. put you on television. Put them all, certainly. Come on. Amen. You're, allow, you're allowed to bring any statue you like. Any That's statue. Right. Biggest you like. So, so to ask me why didn't we call the priest, we've been calling him for years. Oh, yeah. Even some of my staff been calling around, mm -hmm. sending letters to Catholic priests to come on and meet us. Amen. The only thing them boys like to answer to is altar boys. That's right. 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 The reaction to Jennings' message has been mixed. On one hand, Many believers who are frustrated with the current state of the church have found his message inspiring and have joined the call for reform. They appreciate his emphasis on biblical principles and his uncompromising stance on accountability and transparency. For these individuals, Jennings' message provides a framework for understanding the church's problems and a roadmap for addressing them. They see his call for a return to biblical principles as a necessary step for restoring the church's integrity and credibility. On the other hand, some within the Catholic Church have been critical of Jennings' approach. They argue that his critique is overly simplistic and fails to take into account the complexities of the Church's history and structure. Some have also accused him of being anti-Catholic and of using the Church's problems to promote his own theological agenda. These critics argue that while reform is necessary, it should be carried out in a way that respects the Church's traditions and structures and that Jennings' call for radical change risks undermining the very foundations of the church. Despite these criticisms, Jennings' message continues to resonate with many believers. His emphasis on transparency and accountability has struck a chord with those who are tired of scandals and cover-ups and who want to see genuine change within the church. His call for a return to biblical principles appeals to those who believe that the church has lost its way and needs to rediscover its true mission. For many, Jennings' message offers a vision of a church that is more transparent, accountable, and faithful to its foundational principles. The broader implications of Jennings' message are significant. If his call for reform were to be widely adopted, it could lead to substantial changes within the Catholic Church. Greater transparency and accountability could help to restore trust among the faithful and ensure that the church is more responsive to the needs and concerns of its members. A return to biblical principles could provide a clear moral and ethical framework for the church's actions and decisions, helping to prevent future scandals and mismanagement. Furthermore, active engagement from the laity could foster a more vibrant and dynamic church community where believers are empowered to take an active role in shaping the church's future. In conclusion, Gino Jennings' advocacy for transparency, accountability, and adherence to biblical principles has resonated with many who are seeking reform within the Catholic Church. His message, grounded in a strict interpretation of the Bible, calls for a radical restructuring of the Church's governance and a return to the moral and ethical standards set forth in the Bible. 
Jennings' critique of the church's handling of sexual abuse scandals and financial mismanagement highlights the need for greater transparency and accountability, while his call for active engagement from believers encourages a more dynamic and responsive church community. Despite some criticisms, Jennings' message continues to inspire those who seek a church that is more faithful to its foundational principles and committed to integrity and transparency.